Yeah, when I was doing the Course Miracles workbook lessons, and I really stepped back and looked at what he was asking in a lot of the lessons, I thought, oh my goodness, this is the Course's path to meditation, the workbook. You know, where he talks about we start the day in silence, and as you move along progressively, it's like if you could say, oh my gosh, this is a, this is a methodology in reaching deeper and deeper meditative states. That's what the, the workbook of the Course in Miracles actually is. It's just like we have TM, Transcendental Meditation, and there's just many, many different techniques and breathing and poses and postures and so on and so forth. This is Jesus' way. And the thing about it is, I think it has to do a lot with readiness too, because um, it's not so much a matter of time. A lot of people, I think, will, will hear or feel that meditation would be helpful in their life, but they don't know where they are in terms of readiness. And if they try to meditate for 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, that sometimes they can gauge it, like you can feel the resistance, the mm -hmm. restlessness, the difficulty. Uh, and, and there's nothing special about time, about closing your your eyes for a certain amount of time and having the monkey mind just chattering and roaring away in there. Um, it's more about, about clearing away the obstacles in your mind, which is what the Course is about, removing the obstacles. And then as you do this progressively, your mind is more and more ready for the stillness. And it's more of a natural stillness. You know, like the Buddhists talk about open-eyed meditation, it's not even a Mm -hmm. A meditation that requires you to even have your eyes closed. It's just more, it becomes more of a, a state of mind as you clear away the obstacles and the debris, the, the chatter goes down. The yeah. static just goes down and down. And so, some people try to supplement their work with the Course with meditation, although I, I really feel like if you just follow the Course and you follow what the directions are, the instructions, you are doing, that is your gateway into meditation. You don't really need to throw on another technique or something else. There's even one part of the Course where Jesus says, this Course has everything you need. Mm. Now that was good for me. I was, <laughs> when I was ready to supplement the Course with a lot of other things, you know, it was just like, oh, no, it's fine, you're, you're progressing very well, just, just follow the instructions and, and it was kind of nice, because I was kind of, was, leave no stone unturned, and I was in the bunches of different pathways and techniques and strategies and this and this and this, and to read that, it was like, oh, that feels really good. So then you could say I kind of gave myself over to the Course and in that way, and I, I didn't feel the need to keep supplementing and mixing it with a bunch of other things. I actually stopped reading that stack of books by my bed. I I just used the workbook lessons, and I, I wasn't like trying to do meditation on top of anything or whatever. And you know, I found it really worked. I found it did lead to a very still mind, oh. and that I I don't have that monkey mind and that that chatter, oh. yeah. you know, going on. It's just really quiet. <laughs> In terms of it's a natural state now, so it's not like surprising or, you know, it's just, yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. It's the natural state of the mind. Yeah. I guess in that sense, it's sort of, you know, it's one less thing to do, one less thing to worry about. Just like you say, stick with the course, not think oh, I should be meditating or having to do anything else. It just seems a lot of people meditate, that's all. Um, mm. I was curious about that. Yeah, so maybe there was something I was missing out on. I, think, <laughs> I, I don't know even how, how much, I think the more you, you get into the miracles, the more he, Jesus says miracles are involuntary and they should not be under conscious control. So a lot of times, I think if you went around and you talked to people, they would say, oh, I just found myself sitting or closing my eyes and it's not like, there was like a conscious saying, like, I'm going to meditate now. Mm. You know, which is the way that it seems at the beginning, because it's like another activity. 
you know, it's, yeah. it's an activity. It's not as, it's not so much a state of mind at the beginning. It's more of an activity mm. to practice. Yeah. And then there's this, like the other night, uh, I was over there at the, off the kitchen, and we just finished dinner, and after the wedding, and I was just kind of feeling out and just kind of taking, walking around there, and that's when. Uh, um, Sonia came to me and just said, can you spend a few minutes with me? And we went on the couch and spent a little time and then people came to work party, the dance was going on over here. And then I, I was just guided to kind of walk up the field and went into the house up at the top of the hill and the candles were lit and, and Suzanne was just in there, just eyes closed and candles lit while the party and the dancing and the jamming and everything was going on. She was up there and and then um, afterwards I saw her and she said, Wow, that was really great, but there's still a part of my mind that's going, You should be down there joining with your brothers and sisters and dancing and this and this. And she said, but I didn't really feel it. I felt like just lighting some candles and I was aware of the, the dance part and the celebration of the jamming going on, but I felt to just be in the stillness. I said, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you just followed what was in your heart and you didn't buy into that shit, <laughs> you know, and get down there, you know, and, and she says, yeah, because I feel really quiet and, and this feels really good and I feel like I've I've done so many treats and done so many, many of these things for so many years and even when I'm moving the chairs going, I can't hear it. It's like 20, 20 some years of moving chairs for bodies to sit in for retreats and then just sitting up there lighting some candles. You know, it just was inviting. It was delicious. You know, it was calling her heart and she went with it and and she says, thank you. Thank you for being a reflection of saying, you're perfect just where you are. You, you don't have to play the retreat hostess. Yeah. The retreat hostess with the mostess. <laughs> you know, trying to, yeah. you know, be concerned for, are there enough chairs? Are the conditions right? Are they, they, you know, almost like a mother hen, they, they, retreat. She did a lot of kitchen duty that day. Remember, that was the day that she felt... She felt just guided to go yeah. in the kitchen. Uh -huh. right. right. I love that. <laughs> it takes it away from like this, as if there's this something else hovering in your mind. That's, and I know Karen, we talked, because when you wanted to come to this retreat, it was like, I don't want to be feeling obligated to a role, as she said. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is it about this picture? Who oh, cares? We have a camera. Again. <laughs> first time in three days. First time in three days, yeah. It's like the first hit. The key thing is though, you, you don't, it's the obligation, it's the, it's yeah. the feeling of this obligation, like, you know, like obligated or indebted or my happiness depends on having a camera. <laughs> In front, you know, that's the feeling, you know, that we're going for is that sense of freedom. Mm. Yeah.